Uh, yeah, as soon as I got it, so uh, when we went to Vegas for the first time this, this season, um, the, the Golden Knights kind of had a nice little mini ceremony for me in the dressing room. I got to, and they presented the ring for me. And, and so after that game uh, on the bus, everyone was, was wanted to see it, and I showed everyone, and, but, uh, but not for too long because, um, yeah. you know, of course they were a big part of our win, so <laughs> <laughs> I didn't want to gloat too much. <laughs> That is Winnipeg Jet goaltender Lauren Bersois. He's joining us here on Ground Control, the official podcast of the Winnipeg Jets. Before we get to Lauren, we're going to go through a bunch of other things with Tyler and Jamie. I'm here. We'll get to the sweatshirt here momentarily. But that's It's sharp. Thanks. Um, Jets are about to take on the St. Louis Blues. We're taping this on a Tuesday, a little ahead of schedule because Tyler's got travel responsibilities as the Jets will have an interesting road trip coming up uh, this week. Um, let's, let's get right to the thick of things. Josh Morrissey. My goodness. Yeah. Um, in the in the conversation for a long time last year for the Norris Trophy, top defenseman in the National Hockey League, a little quiet this year. And I think there was, you know, you, you underappreciate how great of a player he is when the points aren't coming as much as they were, say, last year, right? And, I mean, not here. People appreciate him here. Yep. But I think that's part of the, part of the issue. And I think Rick Bonus talked about a little bit about how power play wasn't going as well, therefore the points were coming up as well. Yeah. And, yeah. I mean, for Josh Morrissey – you know, him being in the thick of that Norris conversation and then not really getting nominated last mm-hmm. year, I think was, you know, speaks to a larger, you know, not issue, but what we see typically here in right. Winnipeg, right? Yeah. And, and for small market. For whatever that is, fine. Let's leave that at that. But Josh Morrissey has done the little things incredibly well this mm-hmm. year. I, I think his escapability, first of all, in his own corner is elite and I'll put that up with the best of them he just is able to come out with the puck his skating his edge work it's phenomenal and he just thinks the game so well and I mean that's evidenced by the first assist on the Mark Shifley goal in the first period against the Arizona Coyotes Mm -hmm. you know he steps over the blue line slap pass to the to the far corner catches Ingram sleeping that is a that is a set play you don't just do that without knowing where Mark Shifley is on the ice so um, obviously, he's had nine assists in four games. Uh, yeah. I'd say that's pretty good. <laughs> that's, um, that's, that's up so there. This is the time of the year when your best players need to start being your best players, and Josh Morrissey is certainly doing that. And I, I even think about the win in Chicago where he broke up the play at the one end and then started going back the other way yep. as well on the yeah, game-winning goal. So he, he does everything, the little things so well, and we appreciate him, and certainly with this point streak he's on right now and the amount of assists he's pouring in, pouring in right now with the power play well, playing as well yep. as it is. Josh Morris will start getting the recognition he deserves. Uh, speaking of that, let's hear from Rick Bonus and Mark Shifley on Josh Morrissey. It's not that he's doing anything different. It's just that for a while there, the puck wasn't going in and the power play wasn't very effective. And now the, the puck's gone in a little bit better, five on five, but more importantly, the, the points are there in the power play that weren't there for most of the year. So, uh, yeah, it's good to see him get rewarded with that. Yeah, he's been he's just been fantastic. He's he's making a lot of great plays. He's uh, he's great in the D zone. He cuts out. He cuts cuts things off quick and, and gets it going the other way. And you know a lot of a lot of you know un you know unheralded um, plays that he's making from from his own end that not not, not, a, lot of pe- not a lot of people will see. Um, but he's making a lot of a lot of great plays all over the ice. The the league's funny. I mean, sometimes you play great and and don't get rewarded. And other nights. Uh, you know, you make a couple good plays and just kind of play average and, and things go well. So, you know, as I mentioned the other day, I think, you know, our power plays uh, started to click recently. And, um, you know, sometimes you get a, an extra assist uh, here and there on the power play and kind of bleeds over in your five on five game where you feel uh, a little bit better with the puck. Um, but for me, I'm, I'm not trying to change anything or do anything different in my game. Um, you know, this year I've prided myself on trying to take uh, you know, not change anything offensively, but uh, continue to make the defensive side of the game, uh, you know, a priority. And, and as our whole team has tried to do, be a, a stingy, tough defensive team to play against. So doing that without, you know, losing the offensive side is, has been um, my focus. And, you know, it's been nice that, you know, some pucks have been going in lately and getting, getting some assists. But as I've always said, when you play with great players as well and you get uh, the opportunity to play in big situations, and offensive situations, um, you know, you get rewarded. So I like to keep it going. Uh, as always, well spoken from uh, Rick Bonus on Josh Morrissey. And, you know, Kyle Connor has got overtime winning goals and back to back games as we record this podcast. Pretty nice. And you, you look at what Austin Matthews has done this, uh, this year, the talk of 76 goals. He's going to score 70. 
Well, just keep in mind, Kyle Connor was, you know, right there with Austin Matthews yeah. at the beginning part of the season, right? He was at one point leading the league in goals. So up until the injury. So I think a lot of that has been lost with the time away from the game. But now it looks like Kyle Connor's heating up again. Yeah, absolutely. Points in five straight. Uh, a lot of multi-goal multi, yeah. multi -goal and multi-assist efforts along that way too. So uh, he's been playing elite hockey as of late. You know, I think for them, Rick Bonus has alluded to him and his, uh, Gabriel Velarde and Mark Scheifele being a little bit better in the defensive zone. Yeah. And I think we're starting to see that progression. You know, like I said earlier with Josh, you're at a time in the season where your best players need to start being your best players. Well, Kyle Connor's doing that, especially, you know, two straight overtime winners. He's finding himself the soft spots and the power play is heating up and that helps Kyle Connor yeah. as well. That's just amazing. It helps. It's just a trickle down effect. It helps many people when the power play gets Absolutely. going. And, and, and I think coming off of that injury, you know, Kyle's a guy that really we haven't seen knock on wood get injured mm -hmm. a ton over his career here in Winnipeg. So he's somebody that definitely, you know, I think in that scenario is going to maybe take a couple extra weeks just to sort it out. I mean, he talked about how the, the knee brace was something that he was going to have to adjust yeah. to where Velarde earlier in, earlier in the season, you know, wasn't so sure just about which brace he wanted to wear. Kyle just kind of went and ran with it. And it took him a little time, it seems, to find the score sheet. Not saying he's been playing bad hockey by any stretch yeah. of the imagination, but He's been really good. Uh, listen, we almost There's have a, like a, a live studio audience. Uh, there's a special guest in the city here today, and um, we're going to keep putting along here, as they say. Yep. But uh, you know who's a good person to ask about Kyle Connor? His line mate, Mark Shifley. Here's that, that, that answer. Yeah, he's, he's hitting it well. He's, he's you know, going to the right areas. And, you know, I think he's, he's making a lot, of, a lot of little plays that, you know, no one would see. And, you know, he's been, he's been fun to play with. I love, I love uh, getting to play with him and just got to keep going. I feel like we're going through everybody on the top line and Gabe Velarde, uh, a move for the ages, let's just say. Beautiful. Just, and Sean Monaghan was sick the other day against Arizona, so I, Alex Iafalo slipped up in the power play, but the power play ends up scoring two goals. But my goodness, like Gabe Velarde continues, the appreciation of him grows every game that he plays in the Winnipeg Jet jersey. Yeah, he really seems to be finding a stride. Obviously, after the injury, he caught fire and was great. I think it was an eight-game point streak. And then you look at what's happening right now. He's gaining a lot of confidence in the middle of the ice. He's a big body, and he's shifty. And he has – the moves in tight – Mm -hmm. are so elite and his hands are unreal yeah so i mean for the winnipeg jets to have that in their arsenal you gotta like that and i love the fact that he is our play of the week here it is the circle back up top for morrissey near side for shifley shifley down low drops that move in the back and shot by Malardi. he scores what a move by gabriel Malardi! it's a power play goal and winnipeg leads at 3-1 Hi, I'm Kyle Connor. Mercy Connor scores! And this is the Ground Control Podcast. Uh, before we get to our, our main guest, which is Lauren Brassois, the uh, goaltender from the Winnipeg Jets, we got to talk about this hoodie. Like, it's, yeah. it's something else. Thanks. So yeah. I had a couple compliments on it today. Where did you get that hoodie? Hmm, well, let's think about this for a second. I uh, got it at Jets Gear. Okay. Um, this is the Vogue November hoodie. Mm -hmm. uh, comes in black. I believe there's another color as well. Uh, Vogue also has a bunch of other different pieces that are more lifestyle pieces. Looks, you know, kind of has that, uh, you know, not wear to the rink uh, kind of piece, but everyday life sort of thing. Yeah. So, yeah, it's really comfortable. Uh, you can get it at all Jets Gear locations. We, we tried punching you with it on you. Look, didn't even notice because it's got a it's thick, it's thick nice. exterior, yeah, soft on the inside, soft. obviously. Yeah, yeah, just like me. A little cozy. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah. Jet Scare locations, you can get them at every single one of those. And, of course, you can get it online at truenorthshop.com. Uh, and I'm sorry to cut you off, but our main guest is backup goaltender Lauren Brassois. Covered many items, uh, his contract, his Stanley Cup ring, and, of course, his grandfather. Here's a great conversation with LB. Please welcome to the podcast, uh, Lauren Brassois. And when you left here, did you ever think you'd be back? Uh, no, I, uh, I never thought I would, but, uh, but here we are. I mean, obviously, when you move on to another team, it, it is weird to think that you would ever come back to a team. But you are here. And how strange was it to come back after, um, you know? It was it was more strange that it wasn't strange. Yeah. Uh, as soon as I walked in the arena, uh, it had been two years, but it felt like I, you know, it was that previous season that I was here. Um, you know, three, three seasons is a lot. Mm -hmm. So I got uh, comfortable. And it was the first three seasons that I had success in this league. And so... I built a rapport with the same core guys that are still here, and and so just coming back in, and the trainers and mm -hmm. are all the same, obviously. So uh, it felt comfortable right away. 
I guess when the equipment manager knows exactly what you need and what yeah. you what, you, what your likes and not and dislikes are, that that must make things a lot easier for you. And how equipment, how important equipment is for a goaltender. Yeah, I mean, and not just equipment, just you know, having a relationship with them, uh, you know, being able to, you know, relax at the rink and mm-hmm. and you know, um, just like fool around and 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 chop it up with them and and teammates and because uh, you know when you're in, in a new organization, it's not just the players it's you know it's the coaches it's the staff it's the management it's everyone there's a lot of moving pieces and um it takes a lot of uh mental energy to get to know everyone and so having to uh i got to skip all that right um not that that's not an enjoyable thing but um it's just you know it was just nice to to how how seamless the transition was when you come in like changing systems as a goaltender must be a little confusing to start but when you come back and knowing where the defensemen are going to be when you're playing the puck is that one of the hardest transfers that you have when you go to a new team yeah i would say it's the most direct it's probably the only thing that uh, a goalie you know has that's a direct connection to to your line mates right and, and your teammates uh most of our job is is just you know us versus the puck and the other team uh so yeah that's the, the one thing that's the biggest transition, especially if you just came from a team that had a pretty simple, um, you know, structure to what the goalie and the defenseman expect of each other, and which is, you know, where I had just come from. Uh, and then so it was a little little bit of a, an adjustment, but I don't, didn't think it took too long to, to figure the defenseman out and, and them to figure me out. Is it still uh, awesome to think you're a Stanley Cup champion? Yeah, I mean... A, it's a dream come true for sure. Yeah, I mean, and then I don't want to get too much into it and all this stuff like that. But what what have you done with your ring? Um, well, I don't want to say because yeah, because okay, I, I, it's uh, in a good place. It's in a good place. Have your teammates now ever asked to see it? Uh, yeah, as soon as I got it. So uh, when we went to Vegas for the first time this this season, um, the the Golden Knights kind of had a nice little mini ceremony for me in the dressing room. I got to and they presented the ring for me and. And so after that game uh, on the bus, everyone was was wanted to see it, and I showed everyone. And but uh, but not for too long, because um, yeah, you know, of course they were a big part of our win. So <laughs> <laughs> I didn't want to gloat too much. Who was the, who was the <clears throat> funnest person to show that to? Like who was the most um, most emotional person to, sh- to show your Stanley Cup ring to? Family members, better half. That's a good question. I know your grandpa plays a large role in your life, and yeah. is it, how, how fun is that to show that to your grandpa? That was great. Um, yeah, he's been a big part of my career. He's a he was a businessman, yeah, and so it's not even necessarily the uh, the game itself that intrigues him as much as the business side of things. And mm-hmm. whenever there's contract negotiations, like he blows my phone up whenever I'm a part of any sort of free agency. Uh, he almost I if I give him a, a direct line to my agent, I think he would you know he'd bug the crap out of him nonstop. Uh, so that that was pretty that was pretty cool um, when I showed him and uh, I think everyone had kind of an equal amount of enthusiasm. I I, I don't know if I would want to pick anyone out of uh, out of the family or the friends. Uh, yeah, almost uh, not fair, right? Because yeah, yeah. of how, how how everybody's role in that. But yeah, I, exactly. I want to go back to your grandpa for a second with the free agency. What is it exactly that he talks to you about when like just the terms and stuff? Like how yeah. how, how detailed does he want to get into it with you? I mean, um, yeah, as detailed as, as he can get. Um, he uh, he loves the numbers, right? He yeah. Loves, he loves you know, you know how much other other goalies have uh, you know earned in similar situations. Like he's doing essentially the same thing as my agent's doing. And uh, but uh, over the years, uh, he used to be so enthusiastic. He would send me articles and send me this. He's got you know Google alerts on uh, with my name. And and so anytime there's anything that has anything to do with me that shows up on Google, it alerts him. So um, which isn't often. So, <laughs> but, uh, um, but, you know, f- during free agency and stuff, it, it happens a little bit more and he would send me article after article. And, um, I think he's starting to realize, you know, it's not necessarily stuff I want to see, but, um, so he's toned her down, but, uh, he definitely loves, so it'd be bad or good articles. Good or bad. Say, I, don't, yeah. I don't really want to see it. Uh, even good articles can, you know, you know, it's, I, I prefer to stay grounded, you know? So, mm-hmm. so I usually leave that to the, to the side and sweep it under the rug. So, um, but. Yeah, you know he he wants to be involved and yeah, like I said, he talks the numbers, he uh, and, and the business side of things and the CBA and what's to be expected if there's injuries and you know it, when I was you know in the minors last year he was all over like what are the rules for you know me being able to be called up and the salary cap and he's like doing all the numbers he he loves all that the exact opposite of any friends right they're, they're, yeah yeah. <laughs> yeah they're exact opposite yeah hey you mentioned this the other day about you, you had you had a surgery and just how important was that surgery for you to get you know, for you to continue your, your career? 
I would say um, not as much continue my career, but start it. Yeah. Um, I, uh, I've, uh, for the first time, I'm, I'm playing without pain. And, and even last year was, you know, the first season without, uh, you know, out of the, out of the surgery. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and so anyone who's had a surgery like that, you know, that invasive uh, can tell you that, um, you know, you can be, you know, game ready and playing, but, you know, you're still, there's still like little aches and pains and there's a lot of, um, you know, your, your body compensates, you know, for, for as long as it can um, before the surgery is inevitable. And so my body was compensating. So I had, you know, different mus- muscle patterns and uh, asymmetries with my body that, uh, that were still trying to be ironed out. And, you know, the, the weak muscles were still strengthening. And, and so I, I felt good, especially the second half of the year. Luckily, when I got called up yeah. um, to Vegas, I was ready to go. But the first half of the year, I, you know, I wasn't, I wasn't right. And, um, and still working through some things. But, you know, I felt like, you know, my opportunity was, you know, was dwindling there because, you know, they brought in Aiden Hill. And, mm-hmm. and so I needed to prove something pretty quick. So, um, you know, you, you push the limits. And, and, then, um, and then, unfortunately, you know, once I got the opportunity, I was feeling good in terms of performance. But you're still not, um, you know, 100 yet. And, uh, but it was good enough to, to show what I can do again, and, uh, which is a blessing. And, uh, but unfortunately, the body's, you know, it, you know, called it quits by the end of that year. But so for this season, this is the first season in my entire career that I'm playing without pain. Yeah. Um, you know, I don't have to do nearly as much before a skate, after a skate, um, you know, to prepare or to, you know, to put, you know, Humpty Dumpty back together again. You know, it, it and it's, it's um, even my quality of life, it just feels so much better this year. I, you know, I'm so much more relaxed and I'm, you know, enjoying life outside of the rink a lot more and um so I, i've just been super grateful for you know the fact that i was able to get the surgery and and still you know have been able to grind out enough opportunity to stay in the league well that, that's fantastic news and to hear that like how how freeing is that to have that knowledge that your body is responding the way you want it to and you can almost feel young again i guess in yeah. some ways seriously though yeah I, and, and i'm i've come to a point in my career where um i i really enjoy the process and getting better and mm-hmm. um you know, I think when you're younger and in the league, you like the extracurricular stuff and you can kind of get distracted. And now I, I truly love, um, you know, trying to see how good I can get. Right. And, um, and so, you know, it's, and it's nice too, you know, being, um, you know, in a, in a situation that I'm in right now as a backup, you can kind of behind the scenes work on things and, uh, and sharpen your, you know, your sword and, and, and then surprise people whenever you do go in the net. Um, which has been great and and to do so there's a lot of things I can work on in in practice and off the ice that you know I'd I'd be tentative about doing Um, and now I you know I can work on those things and sharpen those things and and now the results are slowly starting to to build and 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 catch up and and it's just been so much fun. Who on this team does it bother you the most that scores on you in practice? Um, This is a fun question I hope yeah. yeah I hope you take it that way. I'm not trying to get you in trouble or cause any controversy. Of, I a lot of guys score, though. <laughs> no, they don't. Yeah. Uh, who do I hate? <laughs> Fats tries to score five hole on me once in a while. And I, it hasn't been working lately, but once in a while it still does. And uh, and that one irks me. Yeah. Um, That's the spot. Yeah. 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 Don't you go never want to. You never want to get beat five hole. <laughs> that one always sucks. I don't know. That's a, that's, I should have a guy, but yeah. I, I can't well, think of one. Maybe I haven't been back long enough for to build up or something in that yeah, way, right? True, so true. Um, what has what, what Wade Flaherty meant to you? And I know I asked you the last time you were here, but I mean, what a great, great guy. Yeah, he's an awesome man. And uh, that's another, uh, you know, one of those guys you, you, you know, come back into an organization and so it feels like, uh, you know, I've been, you know, friends and colleagues with them my my entire career just you know you pick up right where you left off and um I you know I love working with them and I think uh and not just him like the the dynamic me Helly and, and him have is is pretty special I think it's pr- it's pretty rare in this league or any league for that matter because the goaltending position is kind of a an odd one where you're you know the only person you can relate to is your main competition and um, but, and, you know, you're usually different age groups and whatnot. So me and Helly being the same age group and respect each other a lot and are good friends. And then the net dynamic between us two and, and flats, we all get along so well. Uh, it's a really fun atmosphere, um, to come to the rink to all the time. I'm always like watching flats at the beginning of part of practice and I don't, the, the elastic, like, what is the whole purpose <laughs> behind, like, cause I have no clue what that means. I know it must be strengthening for your core or for your, bo- your bottom part of your body, but what is the elastic for? It's, yeah, it's just resistance training, yeah. right? It's, mm-hmm. um, you do a lot of that stuff off the ice, but um, it's really hard to, you know, 
simulate on ice stuff with the resistance training. So that's kind of our little uh, method to do that. So it's a little bit more targeted towards what we actually do out there. And, uh, you know, if the season you know, wasn't so grueling, we'd probably do a little bit more of that. Because uh, I, I personally like, like doing a lot of that stuff, that, mm-hmm. you know, that quirky, weird stuff. With the schedule about to get a little crazy here in March, do you like that? I do because it means I'm going to be in the Netherlands right. more. Yeah. Um, looking at the schedule, um, you know, in Halley, we're looking. We knew, if, you know, February wasn't going to be my month, <laughs> uh, <laughs> but uh, March looks like I'll, you know, I should be able to get in the net a little bit more often, which is it's always more fun that way. It's you know, you can get into a bit of a rhythm that way. Do you like that when the media is going, who's starting? Do I like when they're, when they're like they're inquiring who, who's going in goal tonight? Because you know already, so it must be fun that we don't know. Yeah, 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 yeah. there's lots of part. You guys have this plan in front of you, so right, it right. Must get, you must get a little bit of a chuckle out of that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, well, I, um, I, I don't know have, you're not I there in the media room with us, but yeah, yeah. I, I don't hear much of it, and I don't have social media, so I don't know if you know. I don't know if or when people yeah. are contemplating those things. Mm-hmm. Do you do you ever like do you, any other teammates say why aren't you on social media? Or does anyone ever ask you why? I I, I mean I. Not on this team. Being a 52-year-old guy, I kind of know why you don't. But Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, I don't think anyone on this team really inquires because they know me pretty yeah. well at this point. Um, you know, they, you know, even from the last few years, uh, I was starting to, you know, distance myself from such things. Yeah. And, uh, and so I, no, no one really inquires. I think everyone just gets me. Okay, I'm not going to inquire anymore because I've taken up enough of your time. Thank you so much for doing this. Awesome. Thank you. Uh, just great stuff from Laura Bressois. And listen, he talked about how he feels his career is just beginning after the surgery he had a little while ago. And he touched on that a little bit, right? And we don't, re- I didn't, a lot of us didn't know he was playing with a lot of pain over the beginning part of his National Hockey League career. Yep. So just great to hear that he's on the up and up. I do have department. a point on LB. Yeah. This morning I was watching uh, TSN mm-hmm. and they had a analyst on and they were talking about their projected 2026 Team Canada roster. And the topic of goalies came up, of course. Yeah. You know, the, it's, not, it's, it's talked about that the, who's going to play goal for yeah. that team. And there are some good, uh, it's not some as good like, games. It's not as like flat out. There's not an obvious if, answer if, like there has been in years past. If the chips fall the right way in the next year and a half for mm-hmm. Lauren Brossois, is he not at least considered in that conversation? Especially the way he's been playing. Like the last season, he won a Stanley Cup. He's like to me, to be on that roster for him, I don't think is out of the conversation. Yeah. Yeah. So we'll see. Yeah, exciting. And who wouldn't love that more than the people here? Great guy. Uh, great guest. Thanks so much for doing this. You wear that hoodie well. Thanks. Sweater. Is it sweater? Uh, hoodie, sweater, um, and then to our friends in Saskatchewan, bunny hug. <laughs> right. I lived there for a few years. I, I still didn't I still don't. I lived in Alberta my whole life, and I still don't get that, uh, that, yeah. that term. But if you like it, there. wear it. That's all that matters. It doesn't matter what it's called. Get it from Jet Skier. On behalf of Tyler Esquivel, I'm Jamie Thomas, our producer Daniel Moss, and of course the guest uh, Lauren Brossois. And our live watching. studio audience. Yes, thank you. Our first ever live studio audience. Appreciate the buzz in the background. Uh, we'll see you next week on Ground Control.